Alchemy Radio. Hello and welcome to Alchemy Radio, where the only thing we ask of you is that you keep an open mind. Today's guest is Seven Bomber, who is the author of the book The Code to the Matrix and the developer of the Planetary Resistance website. He's an adept instructor in spiritual knowledge with an emphasis on etymology, symbolism and enlightenment. So Seven, you're extremely welcome to Alchemy Radio. Great to have you on board. How are things? Oh, things are excellent. I'm obviously in beautiful Costa Rica. It's early in the morning here. It's actually about 6.49, 7 o'clock, something like that. And uh, things are excellent. I'm just ready to project to your audience today and, and be of service to humanity and even other species to exactly how they can expand beyond the bubble. Fantastic. <laughs> so a magical time in a magical place. And that's your setting right now. For sure. For sure. It's definitely every day of uh, paradise here. Um, and I guess my internal state has reflected in the external. <laughs> well, that's what we like to hear. So tell us a little bit about your background. I suppose, how did you get from where you were to where you are now in an esoteric sense? Well, yeah, definitely from an esoteric sense, that would be easier to explain. Obviously, I think life is full of what I call an occultation, where literally the planet is taking you through the necessary changes that are going to be able to produce the type of individual that you'll be when you leave here. <laughs> so in that tense, I think the spiritual path for me has been going on since I was born. But just directly, when I was around 24, I had a very vivid spiritual encounter. Uh, at that point, I was a very logical, serious person and very stable just because of the things that I was involved with in reality. Mm -hmm. So when I saw what I saw and I felt what I felt, it let me know 100% that there was something so much more out here and that it was possible that all the spiritual uh, lore that I had been reading since a child was true. And um, so this spiritual encounter actually brought my body into what people would call a Kundalini experience. And uh, that brought forth many things, but more importantly and relevant to the reality that we're in is codes to the language. And so that's really how I got here as I started pulling apart language and I wrote a book called The Code of the Matrix, which I gave away for free. And uh, that was, it was my intent that what I understood that everyone should really know. And, um, and so it was my intent to give that to humanity and then just go kind of about my business with my experience that was continuously getting aggressive. Mm -hmm. But that turned out into people writing me back about the book and asking me more and to continue. And that morphed into what we know as the Resistance website. It's actually number one on the Google if you type in the Resistance. So that's pretty difficult, but it's all organic. But that's the official Resistance. The re website was developed. Now we have about 9,000 people in there. And I've been running for about four to five years consistently. So we've gone through this full process. And so the only thing that I've done is just documented the spiritual quest that I'm on. And I'm even more serious about the spiritual quest than everything else going on outside of me. So that's kind of made a really good uh, fit for most people because it's really no ego involved. I always say it's either the man or the mission. Yep. And in this case, it's the mission. Fantastic. And you mentioned the Kundalini experience there. And for those that might know, it's, um, it's often described in yoga or Shakti as a, a kind of a, a corporeal energy or a body energy. Can you describe a little bit more of that for us, please? Oh, yeah, definitely. Obviously, I had to get to the bottom of exactly what happened. I will tell everyone why things were taking place. I had an inkling of knowledge as to spiritually how to explain it and what was going on and, and uh, any kind of system to, to determine what was happening. I just was having the experience. But later on, I definitely had to ask myself, so what exactly happened? And as I started reading more books and getting in the know about different types of information and jargon, I came to the full knowledge of what Kundalini is. Um, obviously, Kundalini transcends on multiple levels, so I'll give people just a, um, a synopsis of it. But within the cossacks of your spine, within the first uh, two to three vertebrae that are there, which are curled up where your tail is or your story, um, they're rest dormant, the core part of your energy center, which used to, in, in, used to stay in uh, the pineal area of the body, but through certain circumstances and situations has retreated into the base of the spine. 
and is generally covered with a great deal of sediment that's accumulated by fear. And if something brings you in life to a point where you stir up that energy to where it breaks through that fear, then it catapults itself like a somewhat of a cataclysm through the centers of your body, which are known as chakra centers, and it turns them on for better or worse, whatever condition they're in. Mm. And for that moment, you have this experience that to you is real. And after that, nobody can convince you that it didn't happen. <laughs> And is it, it's fascinating, is it like a physical experience or is it a spiritual experience? Is it a combination of the two and how long does it last? It's, it's absolutely oh. intriguing. Well, it's definitely a combination of the two. Uh, obviously, there are people who have mental experiences, but Kundalini has always been known to be something very vivid. So it can be, differ it can be differentiated from many of the other uh, more ethereal energies that are on the planet. And obviously, Kundalini, as our bodies connect to the universe, which is something we'll have to get into later on, but Kundalini is also the resident force of this planet that makes the trees grow and causes fertility and abundance within the planetary system. So it also does that in your body. And the experience can last indefinitely. There are people who've gone into what's known as Kundalini syndrome, Jerusalem syndrome, or Babylonian syndrome. And what that is, is that it's a state that's very well documented. And it's when the Kundalini turns on, but the person is not calibrated properly for it and it makes them what we would call crazy. And um, so those are the ranges of it. It could be everything of just a couple seconds a person has an epiphany or experience to a prolonged period where they just completely burn out their system if they don't understand how to govern the energy. And this burns up the neurons in their brain and they go what we call crazy. And have you any idea what might bring about this change or the state of change? Is, is, it a, is there a triggering factor or is it, uh, is it in the lap of the gods, so to speak? Oh, well, it's definitely the, the gods are the humans. I mean, we definitely have to get to a point where we stop playing that game. All this stuff, yeah. it's a pyramid in itself, meaning that everything, if you go to your mother's mother, her grandmother, grandmother, great, great grandmother, you eventually get back to a small tribe. You eventually get back to two people. This is math. It has nothing to do with mysticism in a sense, but obviously math has everything to do with mysticism. But what we're, what we're really talking about here then is we're talking about the apex human uh, is what we call God. Or, mm -hmm. But it's not given that term. And that's what people need to understand is that there are different names for what people call God. That's why if you go to other countries, they don't use the word God because God is a specific being. Now, when you're talking about the supreme being, which is more of the type of tone that we should discuss when we're talking about ourselves, supreme being is a fully activated human, which will actually transcend what we call human and connect with everything. Um, so what we're talking about is... is um, I wanted to title this today somewhat of the state of the human address. Um, we're right now mentally, physically, and spiritually in a critical zone. And, but that's not everyone. So I want that to be known to everyone right now, that there are people who are activated beyond this frequency in a tense, the resonant frequency, and are on the planet, but are not really jumping into what we will call the fight of helping us because a lot of this requires us to start doing things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So mentally, there is a secret in the language. So the language functions as a code, an open source code for those who know how to maneuver and manipulate it. There is a secret within the language that has to be known in order for you to gain mental control. Physically, people are eating spoiled, rotted, decaying meat and many different toxins. So physically, there definitely needs to be some repair done, some cleaning of the filters and the glands. And spiritually, most, in most systems, the chakras or these spiritual centers, which function like the discs on Tron, their memories of your biorhythmic connection across worlds are locked or what's called sealed uh, in the Bible of Revelations. There are seven seals. This is none other than the seven chakras. And these seals, when, when, uh, when a person is sealed, then they don't really have access to that data, knowledge, information, ideas, which are power on the ethereal dimension. So essentially what we're looking at is a situation whereby if we can activate our higher frequencies, we can become the godlike figure in inverted commas or in a sense. For sure. I mean, you would definitely be a, a supreme being or aware of the highest maxim, which is all is self. Uh, all is self is really how you can sum the entire reality up into words because 
what happens is, is that there's fear, <laughs> which is evident not just within the human beings, but also within animals. Mm. Like if you jump at a bird, it'll fly away. So fear is resident on the dimension and it closes things. Just like if, I, if, I, uh, if I'm around the corner and you're coming around at the same time, when we collide, you jump back. Yeah. So this is the same thing that happens with the pineal gland. When it, is in, when it encounters fear, it closes back up like a lotus. So generally, all of our, our body stays locked and constricted in this protective mode because it is still aware of what even can't be seen by the physical eye and its presence, which on the physical level, of course, comes in as just all of the different things that you see going on, the reality that moralistically you don't agree with. And we're not talking about church. We're talking about murdering of people and that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, obviously a, a very in-depth thing to talk about, but it strengthens us in the tense because it gives us the, the maturity that is necessary to go throughout this world. As obviously you see mature and nature are all, really the same word, except for the M and the N. If you understand nature and you understand all of the different things in it, which is really our university or our universe, mm then it actually gives us a whole different introspection into what exactly happens. And now it's, it's an introspection. So most of this is happening inside, just like I say, invasion. They didn't say outvasion. So all of these different paranormal encounters and uh, uh, experiences with other elements and energies is still all taking place with inside. So once a person gets back on their internal alchemical cabinet and starts refreshing some of the things that are missing from it, then they can indeed perform the great work on themselves and then see that the arcana is still alive, it's, but it's not an external thing. So anything that is bringing it as an external thing, such as organized religion, has already been marked and demarked as, um, in every tense, a hindrance to that actual process. But hindrances always manifest themselves as tests or challenges mm. that one faces as they go through their chakra centers. Because surely it won't be, um, like they say, if you study alchemy, it's the study of alchemy that performs the alchemy on you. It won't be you just getting the fountain of youth or the great arcana or whatever, and you didn't go through the necessary courses that allowed you to receive that. That's just kind of the locks on the universe. We can't really change that. But what's happening now is that that entire process where it's being shown, uh, it's the entire alchemical process within us is being shown to actually be something that we're in now and something that we have the full information of how to get all the way through, which is what's being released uh, continuously now if you're listening to the right programs, watching the right shows. Yeah. And this is bringing in what many would call a superhuman, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is something that has already been perceived, already been known about. I just give people the dossier today that there are two, well, in tense, there is a very advanced human being that is here. But sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. If you look on TV, even though you'll, you'll find them there, if you look into society, you'll see people doing super things. They know entire manuals and encyclopedias. Yeah. They know how to operate and fabricate different things. They can remember large scripts, uh, uh, ac actor scripts over prolonged period at the time. You see what I mean? Super memory, et cetera. But the thing is, is that that superhuman has been turned into a super slave, which is the underlying or veiled background of what's going on behind the veil in this reality is something that is attempting to harness or harvest the energy of a being that actually understands this true potentiality, which is created within many of the colonies that we call United right now. So there's United States, there's United Kingdom. And if we look closely, we'll see that there is such a great diversity and a taste of freedom that doesn't exist with other cultures. They are attempting to work their way in that direction, but the mental condition of some of our Asian countries are showing that it's gonna take a great deal of love and compassion and repair to get that mind state out of the program that it's actually in. Yeah. Well, and so we've been basically untethered to a certain tense in our, in our culture. And I think that that's because we are the ones that are going to be able to bring in this energy of total activation because Kundalini, is, it's no joke, it's very vivid. But to be able to share it in a way to it, where it doesn't consume us, because that's, what's, that's the thing with the energy. If they show you that the Kundalini is supposed to flow, it doesn't stay in one chakra. Hmm. So what happens is, is that if a person becomes like God of their chakra, right? 
then the energy can stay there in a tense and they'll become the rulers of that. But they'll also become the burden to the chakras above and then the chakras below. So what we really want to, to bring into this is that this kind of energy is so powerful, it takes a large body of people, the corpus, as we see the, the term is called, to actually hold all the energy. Now, because this was already known, what you have is, now remember, alchemy is to create a body or a corpus that functions as, as an entity or an eidolon on a three-dimensional plane. Yeah. So let me break that down. America is one of them. There's not just United States, there is Central America and there is South America, but that is one body, okay? And then that one body named America, who's androgynin, is built and structured by certain groups of people. They sculpt it, they give it uh, a language, they give it ent uh, entity or incorporate it. And so this has to be seen that our world is spread up, spread out, excuse me, into all of these different bodies that were created by men and women, societies, even other entities that understand this knowledge, which leads back to the pentagram, but understand this knowledge about how to create a body that functions. Because even when you look at businesses, businesses, if you understand the entire structure from the building, it has a skeleton, then it has people inside of it, living organisms, it has communications, it's been incorporated, it is an entity. When you see all of that jargon, then you realize they're creating a body. Yeah. And if to make it function like a Merrill Lynch functions as close to the principles of real alchemy as it can, so that way it survives because the knowledge of the body in, in its perpetually, which is supreme being knowledge, has been plagiarized in a tense by individuals who just work on physical planes alone and become masters of physical planes. Mm. And when we get into one of them, we become a part of the body. Now, notice how the word is universe, meaning uni, meaning united, verse, but in conflict. So the body is indeed united in conflict because notice, if you eat a certain thing, you just went to war with your liver. <laughs> yeah. So as above, so below. What you do, what you put in the mouth area, because it's responsible for it making the final decision. That's why I notice our consciousness where it should rest is in the place that makes the final decision. So in the mind, it decides what it's going to ultimately eat, not the hands. The hands and the lower bodies of the gunads in different places, it's, they suggest what you should go do. Hey, man, I'm going to go. I got to go out tonight, man, and I got to get me a girl. That's gunad conversation. Yeah. While one part is like, man, I just want to be connected and really understand everything. And that's the heart and its communication center and its uh, compassion, etc. And then there's the grand theory. And I need to understand from a quantum level what's taking place. You see, so what we need to understand how to do with our bodies is one, how to communicate. So that means Instead of trying to communicate with everyone else at this point, work with this internal communication. But now here's a deeper thing, John. When you watch a baby that hasn't learned language yet, it literally tells itself to do certain things. I want to go get this ball. But it doesn't say, go get that ball yeah. in the mind because it doesn't have the language yet. So what is it using? And could this possibly be a more supreme language? Of course. So what happens with English, because 26 letters, 26 times 2 is 50, uh, 52, yeah, 52. Yep. 52 weeks in a year, it try, it's trying to function like a cable or a cabal or a wheel, okay? But it's very, it's a block, though. Just like air, uh, excuse me, uh, Hebrew, if you drop it completely down on itself, all the letters are down on themselves, they make what we call a star of David. Yeah. So the Hebrew language is a cube. So when you put it a cube in your mind and you're a sphere, now you got squaring the circle happening in your mind. Yeah. So then you start tumbling all over words. It slows down a, basically an organic super machine. It slows it down to a point where it can be controlled. And that's what I was saying. There are hyper vibrator higher vibratory beings that are on this dimension right now that they are, they don't, they're not in Illuminati. They're not in Ordinati, Intrepidi, Diaboli, and all the rest of the a real secret society you don't know about, first of all. But they're not in those organizations, but they have given up, John, because they have attempted to try to perform their great work mm. and to, on the reality to manifest this, uh, uh, obviously, again, the, the panacea, and it's not working. They want 
to make a cripple climb trees. And because they can't do that alone, they have become discouraged. Yeah. And that's why, again, we, we functioned as a group to hold the energy. So when things like the ineffable name were released, things like that are codes that unlock different levels of, of, of knowledge, energies, and information, mantra, okay? When this started being released, it was always being released without the individual in a tense knowing that, hey, you need to group share this energy. It is way more than you think that it is. Why? Because if you've gotten that far, then your manifestation in your mind for what it should be is immense. So when you put that inside of your body, it's something to the tune of igniting a nuclear weapon or God inside of your body. So this gets to who is the God, and we'll use that term, Germanic God, good. Yep. Who is the God that they trust? The God that they trust is a weapon, John. It, notice anytime it's explained, it's terrible. It vanquishes. It's held in an ark at times where it's the only place it resides, and it's opened up at armies of people that are coming against it. Mm. And this comes from a certain part of our psyche. We can go in the Jungian field then. And what it's about is it's a great level of fear for expansion. <laughs> so if the neighbor's tribe is getting bigger, which basically was your brother or your sister, then there's this idea that you need protection. Because certain little skirmishes start happening like his sheep eating your stuff. This is something that's a quantum effect. You just have to think the whole process through. Yeah. And then now watch how individuals prey on each, against each other. Now, humans praying against humans. So you have Arabs who are humans praying against Christians who are humans. Christians playing against sinners who are humans. So this is now human on human crime. So what happens here is, is that it doesn't matter the story, like who's right, whose father it was, all of that gets obliterated when flying in the face of the sun, which is the real judgment. Everyone will meet that day. There is not one immortal being here on this three dimension that is willing to confess as them being so. That means that there is a date that we all meet, the totality. And so that's really also where it started for me is because since I think age five or six, I started contemplating that, contemplating that. I grew up on a military base right. with my father who's in the United States Marine Corps. And I saw when they flew up the first stealth bomber. And then I saw the budget that was attached to the stealth bomber. And they flashed it across the screen. Oh, we spent this much. And I immediately had the first question because this whole death thing was still bothering me after I saw my pet Snooky die. <laughs> and I said, well, why didn't they take the 60 billion and put it into figuring out what happens what we, when, when we die? Because everyone's going to end up dying. And it didn't, it didn't make sense to me, John. So since, you know, five or six, my mind has always been somewhat uncomfortable about that particular process and period. So obviously, when I got into a position of being able to ask any question and getting an answer, I asked what happens when we die. Yeah. And, uh, and that, my friend, has led me into to this great beyond that I speak of now. Obviously, I'm not going as deep as I can into it. I always say it's, uh, it's more all circumferencing. But, you know, by all means, you, where do you want to continue? <laughs> well, I think uh, let's go as deep as we can. There's a couple of things that really strike me from what you've said over the last few minutes. One is the term nature. I always find it very interesting when I look at the world around me um, that people in general, and certainly the education system or any of the control systems that, that a lot of people are bound by, they see nature as something separate to you or I. I mean, nature, right. nature is something to look at. It's an external thing that we can admire and we can be a part of in a sense in that we can walk around a garden or through a wood or whatever it might be. But it's never seen as something that we are a part of essentially um, at a higher level. And that's something that's bothered me for years. I mean, as long as I can remember as well. Whenever we would in right. school go on a nature walk, for example, and everybody would be lined up and we'd walk out into a field or a forest, whatever it might be. And the teacher would point out various bits and pieces. There's a mushroom on the ground or there's a certain type of tree. And it always seemed wrong to me because I always felt, well, hang on a minute. If the birds are part of nature and the trees are part of nature, surely I'm part of nature as well. Yet I'm being led to believe that this is not the case, that nature is something out with. Whereas I think if people see ourselves as being part of nature, that is a first step. Or it was for me in terms of any kind of awakening or whatever, or breaking free from the control system that was put in place and the conditioning, that kind of thing. 
And then you've the term supernatural, of course, which is attached to anything that is not normal, in inverted commas. Right. So <laughs> these superhumans we see on TV who can memorize or can do whatever it might be, perform great feats, they're, they're called supernatural when they're not. They're I, actually they're super actually, slaves. Exactly. And it's, it's all part of nature. And if we can tap into nature and see ourselves as being something natural, well, then instantly we have a power that we didn't have to begin with. So For sure. I, yeah, I, th For I think sure. nature is a very important one, and I'm I'm really glad you touched on that because I think it kind of sets the tone for a lot of what comes afterwards then as well because yeah and and I, and I would actually like to talk about that a little bit more I, I keep this pad here which every time a lot of ideas always come to me so I mark in that pad and I always advise people to do the same thing especially if we're having a conversation because some stuff will come to you and then obviously new things will come to you and then you'll kind of forget that it's important and just you know go back over and and and, and let it be clear yeah sure. but I, when you were talking about nature and connection like let's just talk of course how about how the disconnection takes place yeah. and what a person is actually being disconnected from and you now the thing about knowledge truth let's say that the thing about the truth is that you should be able to find a correspondence to it on all subsequent planes so if someone tells you the truth you should start seeing it in other places and that should authenticate for you that it's the truth because truth doesn't need anyone to prove it's the truth mm -hmm. it doesn't need the individual that's saying it OK, so but the thing is, if you tell the truth, then you exist as long as the truth has existence, which will be infinitely like the truth cannot be destroyed. So if you carry the truth, then you cannot be destroyed. The truth is immortality. So let's look at this. The disconnection from mother. Now, when you are born from a room in an external environment, the first thing that happens is your cord is cut. OK. Now, the doctor or the PhD, who's the PH, he's Pharaoh, has decreed then that there's going to be a symbolic cutting of you from your mother. This is called scything. This is a, a term used for the, like what you see with the harvesting, there is a sickle in the green reaper's hand, and that sickle is to cut the silver line from the individual in the body, right? These are all metaphors and symbols. Mm. So what happens is, is that there is a metaphorical sky thing from the person in the, in the, and their mother, which attempts as the child goes throughout physical life to make them believe that they're spiritually disconnected from their mother also. Because we have to see not that our physical mothers are completely, because everyone is somewhat partialized in this reality, are completely the archetype of the feminine, the planet, is our mother. It's the one that feeds us. It feeds our mother. <laughs> you can go right to the source. It feeds your father. So that's the real mother, right? Mm -hmm. And if you notice, it's androgen. It can bring forth male and female. So we have to be very clear about what we're talking about when we're talking about the planet. Now, what was noticed, and I'll cite an example, of individuals who have, what was noticed by individuals who have third eyes open which is you can find some of them in Peru, you can find some of them in, in Colombia, different places. When they notice people coming from Western cultures, they notice that the cord that is generally connected from the person to the earth was somehow detached. So that is generally the first thing they do is they plug that cord back in because that's basically your power supply. That's your root. Yeah. Right now, your roots are, of course, your history. Your history is your, your, the, the, the roots of your tree, as they call it, your family tree. So what happens is, is that your real family, of course, is the planet. It's Earth. It's all the animals. It's all the different micro and macrocosmic versions of yourself inside and outside. Um, basically, what we've done is we've unpacked what is generally in fourth dimension in three dimension as much as possible. There are some things that you cannot bring into three dimension because it can't hold three dimension cannot hold it. That's also what happens when you go into a higher state of consciousness, you start kicking off a lot of energy, you will blink out of 3D and go into a dimension that can hold that, that uh, energy. Right. Because if you think about it, we're still in a bubble and our atmospheres are like shells. They are the phi. They are the shells that are protecting us and something it's imprisoning them because they can't get out. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that that's another thing that I want to focus on, especially to make sure we get out in this conversation for people to understand your body is a universe. 
it is connected to all the celestial bodies that you see in the sky and of course more because there's many of them that you're not seeing in this this uh foggy sky these days yeah. right and um but the connection between this is hidden within the symbol known as phi now phi is uh, or excuse me the symbol known as the pentagram which is phi 72 degrees times uh five is 360 degrees that makes a perfect circle so what a pentagram is showing you is it is a way to cut a circle to create what we call division, deuce, implosion, mitosis, or excuse me, explosion, to create that which creates combustion, which then uses our reality somewhat like the legs of the universe. Because notice how in your body you got the head, right? And it's not doing any walking. It's not doing any grabbing. It's only doing talking and thinking. Yeah. So in a tense, if you pulled your head off like a spaceship flying off, Everything that is need to fly off into the higher spheres are located within your head. But if you come into three dimension, now the head is also shaped like an orb. Mm -hmm. If you come into three dimension, you now need to attach like a Voltron <laughs> onto these arms, which are Mars, A-R-M-S, M-A-R-S, a torso, which is the torus or the torsion field, right? And then the legs right, which are, show us the, the animalistic traits of the dog and uh, the serpent, etc. And then that's how you basically, blink, blink, now you're in three dimension. So some of the stuff that they're showing us, but they generally do it all with computers, people have to realize that all that stuff was designed on the human body. So now they've gotten closer to showing you how it actually functions, that generally we are orbs. And even now we have an auric field that projects around us, or means gold, a gold field, basically, that projects around us. And it is in the shape of a torus, which when unfolded in 3D, looks like a sphere. Okay? So yeah. we are basically bubbles within bubbles. But what happens, though, is, is that there was something that shaped, formed, and fashioned in its image, the body. And that's why some people, and then they get into the light and say, I'm not the body. Because even though you have to take care of your body, just like you take care of your car or your ship or whatever, it has a level of consciousness to it. It belongs to nature. You should teach it how to do upright things and how to live beyond. We are still, by most part, spirits. If you're at that level of thinking. So do you see why that this is, again, the, the universe or the university where there's tons of lessons that need to be learned? But now we have to sit back down again and teach the teachers. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like remembering as opposed to going forward. It's going backwards to access the information that we should have, but somehow has been lost along the way. The word remember means to put back on, put back on a member. If you say, what is the member? <laughs> the men think of only one member. There's member, members of the body, the arms, the legs, and also members of the other parts of the ethereal level of our, of our existence. So yeah, when you remember you start to basically put your body or your corpus back together into the magnificent form that it was before it got shaped, molded, and fashioned or crafted by a smith. Hmm. And, uh, and so that, that's, again, what the etymology reveals is you can't just come to a group of people and say, okay, here's a new language. We're going to get rid of your old language. And <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. Language takes thousands of years to change. But if you also realize that within this, just since the 16th, 1600s, the English language has been in play. But the authors of the English language and their intents of what to do with the English language are what's coming into question now. And so this is uh, because this is how we think. This is how we express ourselves. And now, like I said, when you sit down at night and you start talking to yourself, now it's breached your holy of holies. Mm. Because the baby does not use the language to communicate with itself. And so I want to I tell a short story, John. Go and it. it matches up to scripture, even though I'm, I'm not a big fan of scripture. I'm a big fan of riddles being clues. Okay. And I understand codes and metaphors. So there's this one metaphor that says the great angel Michael. Okay, let's describe what they're referring to, a bird man. Now, the bird man is the top of your, your globe or orc sphere. Like you could see your, your head as having two wings on top. It's the first one to fly off with bright ideas, <laughs> right? Hmm. So the Michael or the bird man or the top part of the body, the pineal gland, etc., had a war in heaven. Now, obviously, heaven is the mind, right? 
So there was a war in heaven or in the mind, and that war was brought to it by someone called Satan. Hell, fire, as all the synonymous red. This right. is none other than the root chakra. If you understand the use of heat is to burn up impurities unless it's inverted and used incorrectly, right? Yeah. So like think about smithing and when you, you, make a steel, you make steel pure, you make metals pure, gold pure through fire, right? So it's not for burning people with it. It's for purifying things. So what we have though is we have an inverted character then brought to us known as the devil and going to war with the Michael, the bird man, the angel. Now, let me explain this metaphor and what it really means. It means that every day <laughs> there's a war that takes place where the lower levels of your body be no, below the neck suggest that you should do things. And because we live in a physical world that constantly feeds that part of ourselves, they're always suggesting something that we, the higher mind has already gone through, knows they should not be doing because it's just simply not going to allow it to progress. And then that war, when lost, the person then interchanges places with this energy that is inside that has made the suggestion. So let me make that more clear. Mm. You generally sit on the seat of your brain like a throne, something like, the God, something like what you see on Men in Black with the little alien sitting inside of there, yeah. right, inside of the head. Everyone kind of remembers that image. That's generally where you resided in your higher state of consciousness if you ever decided to use a body. But what happens is if you take a suggestion from the lower bodies, this is like an assault from the lower body to the mind. And the place that that battle takes place is in the neck area, right? So this is the neck area then being the battlefield. Now, if, if the lower thought wins, then they breach the kingdom, meaning they can now, they've now subdued the mind. They can get the mind to do what they, what, what, that they suggested that it do. The higher state of consciousness then ripped off the throne and then thrown down to where, at whatever chakra, generally it's a root chakra urge situation, inverted pentagram or black star as they call it, it, thro it slams them down there, and then it takes control over the body. And this is the, the esoteric side of what actually goes on when you lose the war within. And that's why the Puranas and the Bhagavad Gita's and the battlefield of Arunja was always the body and the different entities that you're warring with inside. Because that's the biorhythms that have been resident within the universe. And that's why in the deeper knowledge, they say it comes like a whisper. But the actual term that uh, the that's the interpretation of the word in English. But what the term means in that language is that uh, you can't other people can't hear it. It's in your mind. The whispers of should I do this? Should I do that? We call it the black snake and the white snake. It's constant duality. I, should I, I, don't, I don't want to be with her anymore. But if I leave, then I, that's not really a good person. And, and then it's this constant, what they call Cain and Abel in the temple. Hmm. This means in the temples of your mind. So you got two temples. This is the other thing about the human body. It's created in a binary configuration. You see out of two eyes, thus you get confused right away. You go into duality right away. Yeah. That's why I say in the meditation, close your eyes. So... And then the singular mind, of course, being able to put your unison in with focus. But in the temple, Cain and Abel, Cain is always warring against Abel. Now, Cain is Khan, is king, is Cohen, who's the priest. He's the Malachim or the Moloch from the uh, Malkuth region. You see, all those words are synonymous because we're talking about the king, the lord of the physical dimension, the antithesis to the sun. It, it's the receptacle for the sun, the shadow the sun casts called Shaddai. So that clarifies that. Then you got Abel, who's Baal, who's Lord, who's God, who's in his eyes white, seraphim, sometimes draconian, but always indignified to the entire scope of what's happening because of its supposed purity. So these on the caudacious staff symbolize the white and the black snake. <laughs> these two constantly warring in the mind as if one of them are right. Yeah. When really there's a staff in the middle that shows you straight and narrow is the way. When you are flying into the face of the sun, which is the orb that sits on the top of the caudacious staff that has the wings around it. When you're flying to the face of the sun, the sun's going to burn off all impurities. It's going to get rid of fear. As they say, this, uh, what was going on in Egypt is that that lion can, on an etheric level, smell fear. 
So no one can etherically walk through that that uh, gate in that initiation portal there because there is definitely one there. So fear in, in a reality, so if fear closes up all of our senses and then we have a reality that is based on fear, that every time we turn on the TV, we don't hear any of the good news. Surely there's good news. <laughs> I even emailed someone's blog the other day and it's just been a con consistent two years of bad news. And I <laughs> had to just, hey man, surely there's gotta be some good news. Yeah, somewhere. I mean, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and I mean, that, that's reflected, of course, in, uh, in all the mainstream media. And it, it seems almost like people are attracted now to bad news almost subconsciously in that even when there is good news, they don't really want to hear it. It's not going to sell newspapers or it's not going to have people glued to it at six o'clock on TV. It's only when there's death, destruction and almost the way it's been packaged recently is as entertainment. It's not real. I mean, there's conflict in Syria, there's war in Iraq, but that's entertainment to most people. It's not a real thing. When in essence, it's something that we're a part of. It's something that we're complicit in on an esoteric level. And it's something that should be of concern, not necessarily something to fear, but something of concern that we should have, I think, a responsibility to do something about, even if right. it's only inside ourselves. Right. I mean, definitely on an esoteric level, seeing that, you know, we're all in this body together. That's what I always say, because I have no fear. I say, if you don't want me here, then you know how to get rid of me. And I'm already not scared of that whole dimension because I've been there multiple times. So just bring it. So after that, what it becomes is it becomes, yes, our responsibility as fathers of the dimension to protect it as much as we can from robbers, thieves, peddlers, these kind of things that that uh, that hamper growth. But if you think about it, there's also something, though, that we call it, I call it the, uh, the chaos, which is billions of people making choices, but encouraged to make bad choices. Right. Yeah, so yeah. when you got mil billions of people making bad choices, that field is known as chaos. OK, so in the chaotic field, I started noticing that people eat bad news. OK, because what happens on the spiritual level, if you're watching the whole thing takes place, is that there there are thought forms. Let's say a bad idea is a thought form and it looks like a shadow. It's the same idea, that same, <laughs> excuse me, the, the same idea that a person would think about when they're thinking ne negatively can form and give itself form to a certain degree. And then when a person starts to sup with it or make it their companion, allow it to sit next to them. They tune into it. <laughs> As they say on TV, let's tune into it. Yeah. So when they choose to tune into it, now the Eucharist or the communion has taken place. This is what goes on in the background. The communion is when you agree to share your energy with another thought or idea form that can interface with you, right? So you're saying that, okay, I'm on that level. So this can take a mighty being who's generally on the throne governing things and slam them down into the base of the cossacks of their spine if they choose to continuously feed themselves this. Now, notice how the top of the head then is what is taking in most of the thing. It's taking, the eyes are taking in the visual. The nose is taking in the senses. The mouth is taking in the flavor. The ears is taking in the sound. So all the ports then, if you because the body again is a spaceship, ladies and gentlemen, we are flying through space. <laughs> when they board you and there becomes an invasion or a war in your heavenly state, you have to know that that's what's taking place. But then when you win the war, John, that's when you see all of it dissipate. Like people think that there is something hindering them from emancipating them. They're scared now. They think that someone's going to come out of a mirror or they've attached to other thought forms that are wrecking their brain. Obviously, you can do that in psychomancy and, 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 and dark magic mysticism it has many different monsters or just distorted forms. Mm -hmm. Because this is why, if you notice, uh, I guess we have to mention an intensive necromicon being full of imperfect pentagrams. And if you understand what that means, that means that with, if the pentagram is not perfect, then it has distortion. So it's not close to phi. And the further that a person gets away from phi on a three-dimensional reality, the less attractive they become. So then if you want to flip that, which the inverted mind does, it seeks to break the mirror. It seeks to shatter the geometry and bring out the most distorted form of the human being and then show that as being the idol or the idolon. They say, hey, this is the person that you should be like. 
And then they give you this character that's a shattered, broken pentagram. And then the person starts to model themselves after that physically. But see, they know they only have control over the physical reality through that, yeah. through the body. <laughs> you see, so think about it. All of this that's going on with us, it's happening to us through the body. And so the creation of the bodies, as they say in Egypt, you bring, bring the weight to measures of the soul and we will bring the vessels, meaning they don't know how to make spirits but they know how to make bodies. And then to animate those bodies is the secret of the Caudacious Staff and Hermes, thought or thought, knowledge, language, which is DNA, which that staff also reveals. It is in itself another form of immortality because as long as you can clone yourself, you can live forever. Now, some people say, well, what are you saying? Are you saying they're cloning themselves? No, we are cloning ourselves. If I have a baby, that baby comes out in a variation of me and its mother. I've sent off in my DNA an exact imprint of me and all of my genes. So we need to be kind of careful what we say about whether clones are good or bad, because I think the word that people are searching for are drones. Yeah, yeah. Which are drones are the mechanical reproductions of, uh, of, of something. Why clones in a tense is the organic reproduction of something. Mm. And, but they warned a great deal. And that's why the great arcanum are turning dirt into gold. <laughs> there was a warning about abundance because abundance creates waste. So if you have too many people on a reality, then the thing that normally burns up the impurities get clogs, gets clogged up. Now, how does that happen in the body? When the person puts too much fat and too many toxins in, one of the chakras and gland systems just become clogged up and that starts to create extra weight on the person. Mm. And then that weight begins to petrify. And then what happens in petrification, John, is a gate is open to something that is normally not resident. Think about this with the body. If you cut the body's skin, which is its envelope, and then you leave that open and exposed to an external reality that is, has viruses, then that becomes infected. Mm. Then the virus that is normally not resident in your system or infection or bacteria is now in your system. So this should also explain to people why the earth now has entities and beings and things that are not symbiotic with this kind of geometry per se. Mm. When you get numbers that can't be divided into spheres, and this is what the math reveals, they'll show you that there are numbers that don't divide well into spheres, meaning you should never bring this kind of number, this kind of archetype, or anything that's related to this into a physical reality. Now, let me rewind a little bit here, because I'm sure there's some people who have an interest in something like magic, and evocation, or invocation. The reality is, is that any type of magnificent life form that could do anything spectacular is definitely not wanting to get you a car. <laughs> so, or get you that girl next door. Yeah. So look at the intent first. The second thing, anything that is powerful enough to change something in the physical dimension and has the rights and abilities to do that, if bought into the three dimension will wreck the three dimension. This is why some people participating in the evocations and vocations notice that the entities appear to be very hostile mm. when coming into this reality. And it's because that's like dragging something back into a womb again. You see what I mean? Like everyone is working outwards with this as far as their energy flow. They're expanding. Yeah. So when you contract something or someone through its Eidolon shape, sign or form, then it will be very upset or had lowered itself back into what is going on in the dimension, which is a lot of, of the antithesis, the jealousy, the upset, the fear, mm -hmm. the debasement, the, uh, as you talked about earlier, the, the actual killing of oneself through killing nature. And so we see this as if a person wants to ask, well, you know, this is really far out. I don't know. I don't know if I can even believe this. I asked that person to first assess the reality and how crazy it really is out here. And then ask yourself, would the answer to why it's so crazy not be just as crazy? <laughs> you would have to get that kind of answer for it to match up for you to be like, okay, well, maybe it's like this, but guess what? It's not maybe. There's a lot of proof. Seven billion people is a lot of people. Absolutely. And we see this in everyday life as well, I think, Seven, because to take war again, um, anytime there's a war, people are up in arms about it and you'll have people protesting on the streets and nobody really wants war. 
Um, however, it is perpetuated in some way. So obviously there is something or somebody who decides that war is a good thing for them or whatever group they represent and they want it, despite the masses being totally against it. So another another source of frustration for me when I was growing up was when I, I remember the uh, the first Iraq war and I was very young and I remember being terrified by the headlines on newspapers and by the news and I thought it was, uh, it was literally going to someone was going to come and bomb my house or whatever, you know. And the more I thought about it as I became older, I thought, well, there is a reason for it. And if this war is so terrible as we know it is, and if people are being killed, and that, make, that side of it makes no sense to me, well, surely it stands to reason that the actual reason for war, not what we're told is the reason, but the actual reason for war is just as horrible, just as terrible, and initially just as difficult to believe because most people go into, oh, yeah. sho- go into shock if something <laughs> happens to them. For example, I mean, we, we hear about shell shock and we hear about people who suffer a bereavement, they go into shock and they, they don't accept that reality for a period of time. And it's almost like this cognitive dissonance. People don't accept the reality of what the reason for something is if it doesn't fit in with their fit in with their pre-existing paradigm. And I think you've kind of nailed it there over the last few minutes. Yeah, I mean, and also, John, mainly if it involves something that they're doing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because everyone yeah. loves to to pass the buck, or it's like a, a scapegoat in a tense where there's someone that's worse than me, so it's probably that person. It's not me. Yeah. And it's actually a collective thing. And it's interesting you brought up the wars because, you know, that's a part of a particular culture. Because if you know, there is a side of us that is attached to valor and attached to testing metal, although that kind of stuff should not be done in mom's womb. <laughs> Most of the entities yeah. that participate in colliding against each other do so way away from environments that contain sensitive uh, life forms, right? So this is just like a parent not doing things in front of their kids that they know is going to damage their kid, okay? So their or child. So that that's that's something that's specific that has to be known. So we have a culture here that came from Mars, and they love wars, and although we've consistently insisted that they lay down arms we find that that's not what we're doing because there are oaths bindings pacts and rituals that we participate in every day we've participated in since we were children that give the right for the the entities that have bound themselves in harmony or they said the mount Hermon, bind themselves in harmony to to be about that it puts us in league with them without us even knowing. Like in the U.S., when we put our right hand on the heart and then we pledge an allegiance to 51 pentagrams that are slightly off kilter. We need to understand what each and every single one of those beings or entities or bodies really are. And then when we are given a talisman, and this doesn't mean that, that we're going to tear down the society by just stopping to do everything. It's not going to be that easy. We are actually going to have to come up with more innovative ways to grow into something new. I'm not kicking anyone under the curb, any society member or some other person who has another ideology. I'm just saying that it ain't working. Because when you put pentagrams, or, or excuse me, they are pentagrams because they are rectangles, but when you put dollars inside of a person's hand, or, or pounds or sterlings or shillings, and it's riddled with talismanic sigils and occults, occult, uh, occult riddlings, then without that person knowing what they're involved in and how they're spending their currency, then that to me is just unfair because in the galaxy, what I learned is that the money thing didn't stop here, John. Yeah. It was in the galaxy. It's called universal currency. It's what they come, or it's not they, or I can say it's more as it, because the universe exacts what it needs or harvests every single entity that lives here. It just does so fairly. How it does so fairly is it takes what you have, divides it, and then takes the portion that it should receive. It doesn't put you in debt. People need to understand the difference. Putting someone in debt is like, let's say, for instance, we're talking about $1,000 here. The person only has $100. I'm going to explain this very simple to universal currency and how it works. So the, the person who is trying to get this, uh, collect this money comes to the individual and says, look, you, uh, you owe me $1,000. And the person says, oh, I only have $100. It's okay, so I'll take the 100 You owe me 900 more plus interest. <laughs> That's not what the universe does. What the universe does is it comes to you and you have $100 
it takes its percent. Let's say its percent is a third and it leaves you with 77 percent. So that way, no matter what happens when it visits you, you always have energy. It's just to the state of what energy, as to the state or the level of what kind of energy that you're actually using. So we have to understand that there is something about this universe that is symbiotic, where it's powering itself perpetually with the life forms that exist within it. That's mm. the ancient symbol Ouroboros. It's in a tense eating and consuming itself to continue to survive, and it's renewing itself. But then there's a vampiric state where if individuals attempt to do the same thing but incorporate stuff like interest, then there's, a, there's an entirely different thing that takes place. So let me bring it full circle here. Yeah. The universe then has this, the universe has endowed you with this energy through your talents and through your skills. Once you build up energy within your body, which is done through the activation, it's done through you passing through the chakras, bringing them online, what you feel in your system is that the fluids, the stuff that's in, the fluids in your spine, even for men, seminal fluid, the fluids and the consistencies of the fluids change. Okay? And so this is like you going from tin <laughs> to platinum as far as your internal fluids. So the universe can propel you in the direction of continuously building that. Or the universe can be in a position where it's consistently removing it from you. I want to get this really clear because they call this the millstone or the grain. Right. This is where the universe, when you get old, you'll figure out all friendly universe becomes nighttime. <laughs> And the, or becomes even the ants that clean meat off the bones. But basically, when you start to, your immune system starts to drop, that's when you start getting all these viruses and parasites that bring out the decay or the death or the shadow state of yourself, or you're headed into the shadow direction. I want people to be clear about this. Immortality is achieved by keeping all vehicles, right now you have three, in supreme condition. Because then what happens is you never become penetrated. Now, I want to talk about something deeper real quick here, John. There is a state that generally, like if you notice, chakras develop at certain ages. Now, these are the energy centers inside of the body that are attached with the activation of your power. Yeah. So they develop at certain ages. So if you notice the muladhara or your foundation or your root chakra develops between the age of one and eight, what generally occurs with the child between that time? We're also dealing in a reality where the probability of that child being sexually abused to a certain level will occur even if it's just by Google. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. What hap so what happens then is that when a person is abused in such ways, it pokes a hole in an otherwise perfect torsion donut. And then that hole starts to seep out, just like someone's cut a hole in your skin. And then from that point, all other malevolent entities and forms, thought forms, enter through that hole. So for people who don't understand that, let me break it down on a physical level. People can tend to get to you, people are entities, they are spirits, mm -hmm. if they start to hamper in on your imp something that happened to you that you still have not cleared yet. <laughs> it gets almost to the point where you can get mad immediately. This means that your field is popped right away and then you, you've sent up a rush of anger, which is another form of the energy flowing through our body, because someone has touched you in a sensitive spot. So do you see how all the jargon is matched up perfect? Well, and that's, that's the thing. If we're, if we're taught to read the language on a literal level, then it leads to us not seeing these mysteries. So then let's, let's keep going. So now this foundation that the person is standing on after eight is crooked because there's something that's deflated it on one side. So this person's auric field is unbalanced now. So then they develop an, the neck chakra, the, na the navel chakra develops. OK, so what I'm trying to get through here to here, because I'm not going to walk through all the chakras, even though I could, mm. is that what happens then is when the person finally reaches a certain age, because the crown chakra is not associated with age, the uh, third eye chakra is not associated with age, because it, you can go through thousands of ages and never see, have a crown chakra. It, so that's why they're not associated with ages. But the foundations or the bottom triangle, what you're standing on, those chakras are going to develop just as sure as you go into pub puberty. If people want to understand this and understand how it works, you only have to look at the stage that the body goes through. There are invisible changes that happen to human beings that are based on celestial bodies like puberty and their rotation around the body 
not so much as just the external sphere, especially if you're in spheres within spheres, mm -hmm. right? So what happens then is, is that with the person's uh, uh, foundation as they, as they get older, and I notice how they say, you should, have a, you should give them a good spiritual foundation. You know, they use terms like that because what happens if you don't have that kind of foundation and then you get to this level in life, which is you're going to go through these chakras anyway, now you're on this crown chakra, or excuse me, you're on this, uh, let's say, a heart chakra, but your heart is inverted. And that's what they, when they say it's inverted and locked, this will explain to you why a superstar, as we call the super slave, exists. It's because you can get to a higher chakra and that chakra is open but turned upside down, thus sending the energy down and then out rather than up and then out as they call centripetal or centrifugal, witter shins or diesel. Which way am I spinning? That's the terms that are used, that it's important to understand how your field is being projected. And so, you know, it, it, again, it leads into immense things because now if you're basically <laughs> tap dancing on earth anyway, because you're in a sphere within a sphere, nothing is solid really here. And then you're basically inside of another field and you're upside down trying to obtain, obtain balance in a system like that is going to be very difficult if you're standing on a cricket foundation. And that's why I say when you see 26 times two, it means half of the English language is missing. The truth, <laughs> generally. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of it is the riddles. They, the what's, when, why, where, and who. I call this the wonderland. And the wizard's all in there. You're in the forest, Alice. Antarctica is the, is the white rabbit that they're following. And when they say the Atlantean island was, was put underwater, you fail to realize that ice is water. So that's the kind of riddles they, they talk in to become overt about what they're doing. But if you want to control anything, you control it from the poles. So when you, control, when you want to control yourself, you need to go to the North Pole and then you need to go to the South Pole, meaning go to the North Pole yourself, reestablish the kingdom, like kick Gunad out. He does have a use, or it does have a use, but to burn up impurities, not as a ruler. Yeah. See, that's what the whole thing about how the reality will be rearranged in the minds of many individuals that catch on to this strong projection of a perfected sphere, is that every piece will have its role. But when a father will no longer sit down with his children or take their admittance, he cannot say that he is a father. He is a surrogate. And so uh, that's what, I, what I'm saying towards any kingdom that has been set up that does not have the ordination or the actual what they call anointing in a tense to become a real parent. Because what we have then is we have many children that are wandering. And this is why I'm glad I had a chance to do this show today is because your audience, by all means, to me, is the audience that should be focused on the most if we're planning on doing something here. Yeah, sure. Because they still have the ability. Like I said, they've been untethered in a tense. But them, they need to understand, first of all, the Kundalini is not a game. I've seen people's hair catch on fire with Kundalini. Kundalini, when going up the spine, if it goes into a chakra that's closed, it actually attempts to open it. And then it's like a ping pong ball. If it's not open, then it, it goes off to the left or to the right. This is called zigzag. Now, if you look at it on the Caldacia staff, it's the path of the serpent. He's zigzagging up the sapphire tree. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the serpent's creating the tree, excuse me. And in this tense, the person is on a tree or on a path and they are just lost in the forest. And this is the many different religions, many different new age movements, many different things that are pushing a person outward. That's how you'll know if it's truth or not. Some people say, well, how do I know if I should trust this? And look, are they telling you about you and how to repair you and how to, you notice the word repair, put yourself back together, take these two pairs and mesh them into one so that you get into all itself and become maximum, maximum in vision and in scope like a supreme being should? Or are they pointing it to St. Germain and some other individual that is supposed to be the one that's supposed to do it today? Because last time I checked, <laughs> it, it, it was either Julius Caesar, Jesus Christ, John Carter, or uh, 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 all the other JCs, which are only, they're only anag anagrams, or excuse me, somewhat of algorithmic codes that go into the person's mind that ease like a lozenge the pain that has been going on for a moment, right. but never really give a real cure because the cure is within so what I also have to say about those characters is that to me, they are steps on a ladder. 
Because some people say, well, are you, you mean that? And then they put their religion in that, that area and then they go on from there. What I'm saying is they are steps on the ladder. If you somehow got on your step or on your chakra and imagined that that was the only thing that exists, well, you've been fooled. There is much more to you. But the, the other thing, John, is you see that we're all coming to a head at this point. And that head is if I tell you you are a supreme being and then you want to kill me, something is wrong with you. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, let's use the general terms, you are God and beyond it. But now you want to hurt me for that? Yeah. Now look at the deep, the depth of the, the control. Because we can no longer accept who we are. And so, see, that's the other thing about the Kundalini and why so many people are afraid of spiritual or paranormal experiences, because it brings them in contact with themselves. And if you're a monster, by all means, you will see it. What happens is, is that in the third eye, once you get to that point that the Kundalini has gotten that high, if you are still in the state of, of, of thinking that there's rep, hybrid reptilians, bipedal hybrid reptilians running around the dimension doing things, then you can manifest a whole visual experience with one. So that's, that's called the misuse of the third eye because it's a projector. Yeah. So a projector, just like a TV, is something that shines a picture in front of you so that you can see it. This is the power that we used to have. PlayStation in the mind. <laughs> you see what I mean? No external things to actually bring light. Absolutely. And so the, the, uh, the whole goal here is, and that's why I don't use the term illuminated. I do use the term enlightened because it means a light inside. And if you understand the state of darkness and ignorance or what you call evil is only ignorance. It hasn't been shown the way. So that would pretty much account for the mistakes that it keeps making. So I don't have time to be trying to march downtown or go all and do put the queen's picture under some hooks or all sorts of weird stuff. <laughs> I'm going to go into shining bright so that they see the beacon in the darkness that they are trapped in because I understand their entire reality and scope. I ate it. The number eight which is what they always wear, was where they got sucked in, mm. into the idea of a false infinity. It's now time for us to get to the point of the real one. And it's not just going in the figure eight circle, you know, back and forth, back and forth, and never really getting anywhere. It's about understanding how to navigate this entire scope. So that's why we call it the Astral Quest. That's actually the series that has been airing now for, I think, a year and a half, something like that. I've been doing the Astral Quest series. Yeah. But what that's been doing is, is that it's been taking people through the chakras, and also, I'm, I'm writing a book right now, and what it's doing is it's going to take an individual through the chakras, but it's going to show them how this chakra manifests in this reality, which hasn't been done. And, and because you always get, you know, basically every time you read one of these, these journals, you feel namaste in the end, name is sad. Like, you just feel like you're, you, you just want to dull out and not pay attention to what's going on, and somehow that's the key. That's a cop-out. <laughs> that's an excuse. That's what the last state of disarmament. If a being can actually really do something about it and then convinced at one point not to, that means that you, you forgot what the power, the energy, the talent is really for. So what I'm saying is that you have a lot of talented people. We have people that have, re, as far as resources, put themselves in a really good spot. But now they are heavy, John, meaning that they're carrying all this current that really could be used to circulate this entire reality but it's stagnant within their chakra center. Yeah. So you'll see how a person can sit in the crown, but be inverted. But even a person who has an activated root chakra is more powerful than an inverted locked crown chakra. So this is what gets you into the multi role playing game about how the chakras like one, like you get a Tom Cruise who has a who has an inverted uh, uh, solar plexus stronger than any person who has a sealed chakra. Uh, below that point. You see what I mean? So it's like you, you have to match it up to, well, your explanation of why certain individuals, because I noticed that that's what the last question is for generally the youth. Then why does Lady Gaga? Then why does Jay-Z? It's because they are inverted and activated. Yeah. You can generally tell by what they're doing or what spews forth from the mouth, but it is a state where you can perform as if you are a god in front of people who have been taught to believe that that's what a god looks like. Yeah. And I, and I think that that's the key to this whole thing is, is that it's not, a, a, it's the essence of what they're doing has talent to it, but the ultimate action of what they're doing when it comes out and when it, you know, breeds itself or basically the, the, the fruit that this seed produces shows that something is horribly wrong with it. 
And so I, I think that that's, uh, that'll give people, again, a lot of those keys of the big questions that are asked at times about how are these other individuals actually having some power over me then if they are, are basically just as even more screwed up than I am. And it's because they are savants in a tense. They're only good at one thing. Generally, if you're talking about an organism that's all inside of a sphere, we were all built to work together. So that means that once division comes, then we're all going to separate. Now, when was the last time that we got an official memo from someone who was an authority that said that they were going to divide us all? Like, or when was the first time, actually, is the question I should ask, because they seem to do it every day they get on TV now. But that first time occurs in the Bible for those Bible lovers. And it says that there's a tower being built. Now, this is always synonymous with the body, Hmm. that there's a tower being built by man and woman. And it seems like that if they build this tower, that there is nothing that they're going to be. There is not anything that they won't be able to accomplish. That's what it said. Let us go down and confuse them. Then you fast for a little bit more and you'll notice that what was used to confuse them was what? Language. Let us change their tongue so that even though they speak the same thing, they won't know what each other is saying. So even now, my message won't reach China until someone interprets it in the Chinese. So China, they, they never get it. Yeah. You see what I mean? So that's the, that's the division. But who is the character doing the division? Oh, my goodness. The same character that two books ago said it's not the author of confusion. <laughs> so let us go down and confuse him. So any kind of thing like this, John, is what I'm saying, will confuse a person. And confuse Kundalini? doesn't work very well. It just, like I said, it zigzags. It never gets to the point fast enough. As I say, the the fastest between point A and point B is a straight line, not a zigzag. So if the energy is like, okay, but maybe Christopher Columbus. Okay, well, maybe the earth is flat. (laughs) Okay, well, maybe we're all standing in a sphere, not coiling through space, but we're in a sphere and we're all rotating around the sun. These kind of notions, which have already been proven not to be true, sends us into a state where we want to understand who is the perpetrator. Like, who is doing this? Who is intentionally sending us in the wrong direction? Yeah. And, and that's where we have to, to me, check the reality. That's what wakes up the otherwise dormant individual who is centered within themselves and, under, and basically in a great level of comfort, but what want to raise from that comfort. And I want to make that really clear, John. Like, there are people, again, I've, myself, even now, I'm content. There's nothing that I need. What, what, what would I need? <laughs> because where would I put it? And then you can't take anything away from me because where would you take it? I am everything. So when you hit that state, then there becomes this calm. But guess what? Then you got to get back in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you, you can sit there as long as you want. It's still, you'll still be in a physical reality. Like around me, it's Costa Rica. Every day is like a paradise. But in my mind and in my body and my soul, there is a turbulence in the tense of me needing to get this information to humanity so that they can experience the Costa Rica style mentality of, of heaven, which is to me work. Yeah, sure. Like people are looking for something to be over. It's just beginning. And people are looking to know everything. Knowledge is energy. So it's like we have to get out of this whole cutting ourselves off by wanting to find the conclusion to things. And that, that's really interesting, Seven, because you speak about the journey and you speak about uh, people always wanting things to be over, or to be a new departure or whatever it is. Everybody's running away from something all the time. And I think what most people seem to, and I mean, this is just my opinion, but I think most people seem to focus on the faraway hills being green or whatever that might be, rather than the journey to get somewhere. Because for me as a being the journey is what it's all about rather than necessarily the end game or the end goal because let's face it when is anybody ever going to reach an end game or an end goal so if people sitting in ireland and it's a gray day or whatever and it's raining in the middle of winter and they think oh costa rica seven he's so lucky over there that's that's fine yeah but seven is only lucky if he's creating his own luck and if his mindset and his his spiritual center is in the place it should be you can transport that johnny or mary sitting in dublin on a grey December afternoon to Costa Rica right. and they could be just as unhappy or just as miserable because it's coming from within rather than yes. the external. And that's why, back again to nature, it's why we're a part of nature in my opinion. And I think as long as people are distracted, you mentioned Jay-Z, Lady Gaga. It's interesting that because when so many of these, um, these savants, as you described them, and quite correctly, I think, are interviewed, and they're asked to discuss what it is they're doing on stage or what it is when they're in the recording studio. Almost to a man or woman, they describe it as being 
taken over by some other force or some other entity. They've no control over what's happening. I think Michael Jackson did some really good interviews, which are up on YouTube, which a lot of people thought, oh, it's Michael Jackson, he's crazy. But when you apply it to what we're speaking about here, it yes. seems to make a lot of sense. He, th- th- these guys describe consistently being taken over by something and channeling something that's outside of their control. And then they almost snap back into themselves after the fact. And a lot of them describe an energy drain and how with the great high that they have, in a sense, provided for their audience, there comes the massive low when they step away from the bright lights. I've experienced right. it myself to a certain degree when performing in front of large crowds. Obviously, the ego is fed to a certain degree. And then when you go away and you're, you're sitting at home the next day, you think, oh, God. And there, there's almost like this, this hangover effect from it. And I think as long as people are distracted Everything is a self-perpetuating kind of mitosis of humanity. Everything is dividing and splitting and nobody's focusing on the whole or the sum of the parts because as you described in the last hour, we can become far more than the sum of our parts provided we realise what the end game is and then appreciate the journey for what the journey is as opposed to always focusing on winning the lottery and getting to point Z from A in a heartbeat. For sure. Well said. Definitely well said. I mean, and it's also, you know, that we're, it's our intake. So we, we look into the intake and then as spiritual beings, and I think that people just still see, okay, the physical body is phi. Phi is a pentagram, pentagram, or can be converted into a pentagram. And that is in itself a gate. Mm. That's what it's showing that we are a huge portal. (laughs) And so what we take in, in our intake comes out of us and reflects even back off of other individuals that are around us. Like, we're, like I said, it's like a, a ping pong. It's really an organic grid. So we can open up a huge vortex of energy draining, uh, <laughs> energy draining fields and then drain all of ourselves, which is what, you know, obviously a certain level of the controllers, they really want to accomplish that all the time. And then the person, it's just another day. See, I wanted to tell a person that they, if they can get a minute, <laughs> <laughs> they can get 30 seconds. Yeah. They will get 30 seconds and then they send another one to get maybe 15 and then another one to get maybe an hour and a half. So you have to really see what's going on. Cons- consi- it's, it'll be on a consistent basis for a person's mind. How many thoughts per second does a person's mind fire off? And then how many of those thoughts are actually pertaining to something that is going to expand them rather than fear? It's got, it has to be an exercise that a person starts to do just to kind of do a quick check on your mind. And you also notice the mind will be like, okay, I got to pay rent. Okay, man, I can't believe she said it to me last night. Oh, man, that person didn't call me back. Oh, my goodness, I got to go over here and get this. Oh, my goodness, I can't eat that tonight. Not that again. I don't even like the color of this. This color is so ugly. You see, so there's, and this is going on consistently, even when the person's not listening to their mind, it's going on. And this is because the mind we have built, and I talk about this in, in the Code of the Matrix. People need to realize also, Code of the Matrix is four years old. So there's going to be some stuff in there that's really uh, antithesis at times. That, but still, if you read through it, you'll get a massive insight, especially if you just are beginning on the path. But you start to look at the whole thing and you start to say, well, I created this monster. Like I, I, and I call it, it's like our child <laughs> and we've been birthing it and creating it since we are inception into this world. And then we have to live with it. And that's sometimes what the mind exists with that points is what we have done to, in our lives and the repercussions and the karmas. Now it's, they are in our minds with us. The person who understands meditative techniques and knows how to expand into their higher selves starts to demark that as almost a separate character in a tense, but it do, they don't forsake it. Because some people say, oh, yeah, that's the ego. We need to forsake it. Oh, no, 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 no. You're going to need that griffin to ride out of here. If you understand what you've actually created, it is phenomenally powerful, but it was never the, the being that was supposed to be deciding about places of, of navigating the expanse in the universe. We are riding the body. It is our ship. It is our chariot. So what happens is, is that once it's like anything else, put back into the perfect condition or the best condition that we can make it, then we can step back inside of it and it works for us rather than working against us. Yeah. But there are things that, again, these are esoteric principles uh, and occult principles that have to be known. And it's really that, again, the body is a gate. What we allow to be, what we take in, we push back out to other individuals. So this becomes like the crabs in a bucket. In many cases, it becomes the blind leading the blind in many cases. Jung or Freud, excuse me, when he finishing his work concluded, and he was more like the Freyder Achad for all the MK Ultra programming that we're seeing now. He concluded that people were more in the groupthink, that they would even think 
um, beyond what would assist them if the group was participating in it. Meaning that you can know something is going to damage you, like let's say a Coca-Cola or a Sprite or yeah. whatever, soda, and then drink it anyway because it tastes good. That is the first sign. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. We're, we don't have to get into the, the, so much of the deep levels of, you know, the, the geometry within other planetary systems and the calculations between orbits and uh, what they call a parallax. We don't have to get into all of that. A person can just go back within and say, well, if I'm being encouraged to destroy myself, I'm on self-destruct mode. So no wonder why I'm not in some place that looks good to me. And you also brought something up earlier about how it doesn't matter where you are physically, your house is inside yeah. your temple is inside so if you can't live inside of yourself you can be laying in bali and it's still going to be the same thing or in my situation i had a little mix up in life where i ended up in jail but i noticed how if a white towel is over your head it's still white and yeah. it was the same yeah. as when i was in the bahamas with a white towel over my head i just felt good because i was in the bahamas i was like i couldn't see anything i was like ah, oh, i'm in the bahamas but it's the same thing if your mind is strong enough and that's also why I want to tell people there is an astral investment that you can make. Invest in yourself. No robbers can take it away. Even if you go bankrupt tomorrow, it won't be gone because they cannot remove it if you build it within. And so that's what we're talking about with what we, what we were designed to do, which was come here and gain all this expanse, invest in only the truth, and then get ready to go to another uh, 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 sphere or even beyond spheres, creating spheres, etc., but now we're sitting down here with the ghost, gothic god, good, old dog face, cherubim, guarding everything in the garden and not allowing people to get the knowledge of the tree. Yeah. Right? Now, what, it, what is the knowledge of the trees hold? Every single thing, trees have always been synonymous with wisdom. Even the connection between trees started with trees and wisdom was started with man's first piece of paper. <laughs> He's writing paper on trees. So all of the herbs and the elements that are within the trees and the synthesis and the, uh, the, synthesis and the, uh, um, the extraction is the fountain of youth. And so when we were, I guess it doesn't mean, this means that this is something that one person needs to find out. And if everyone is in a sharing mood, then, then if he's in the, or that person's in a sharing mood, then everyone knows. This is not something that we have to spend 10, 20, 30 years learning to fast forward our species. You see what I mean, John? Like, we don't need to sit for 20 or 30 years to understand what proper uh, element to extract from nature to open up our entire field. The question now is, is that are we ready for our field to be open? Because last time I checked, Kundalini was inevitable. What the books say is that there will be a time, and we don't want to give any dates, but that the Kundalini of the earth would actually activate. And this would cause all subsequent beings to activate then this would be like a massive level of a judgment day in a tense where if an individual, it was almost like zombie land in a tense. If you've ever seen an individual activate Kundalini that wasn't prepared, you get the whole off balance. You know, somebody's following me. They are, they are trying to stop me and or just even non, uh, non-intelligible speech. So that's one of the things that I, I think that is, is kind of looming in who knows how great the distance. I'm sure they would love to keep Kundalini off. They seem to be able to, to a certain extent, harness Earth to stop Earth's torrential fields by uh, making the inhabitants of the planet very mellow. So there's soft metals then being used in our environment that kill our frequency in a tense yeah. it's physically they need you to keep working so they're not going to put you on to something that's going to physically make you immobilize but spiritually and mentally have we reached mobility if or, or have we have we reached resolution if our memories have been evaporated because really how how uh powerful beings were denoted was by memories that's why if you look in the sumerian text they're talking about the me the ME are basically programs of how to control realities, mainly your own. <laughs> so your memory, if you can't remember what you did yesterday, if you can't remember your dreams, then you're forgetting all of what's most important because that's what stays with you when you do emancipate. And so we fight for our memories because to us, and that's come to the resistance, to us, if with no memories, all this is worthless. Yeah. Why would I even come through a system? Why do I need a mother? Why do I need a child? Why do I need a friend? Why do I need all these people if in the end my memories are going to be wiped? 
And if you talk about reincarnation, you got people coming in and out of the world and not remembering that they were here before. I mean, come on. When are we going to come to some conclusive evidence? See, that's what I'm really also here for is to come to the conclusive evidence about what has been taking place. To make some, some, draw some conclusions here, not, not avoid them because of fears. So in reincarnation processes, what we've discovered is, is that the person passes through any of these pyramidal based systems that you see already built on the planet. And because these are high magnetic fields, it has the effect of wiping off your aura like a credit card in front of a magnet. Yeah. We are magnetic. So what happens is, is that you go through an incarnation and if nothing that you've gained in that incarnation will hold, like we talked about, truth holds. You can't wipe it with a magnetic. If you haven't gained anything, all of who you thought you were, which is illusionary, it's reality, not actuality, is erased. So that's the whole goal here is to give a person a, a debased, shallow life that doesn't have anything to do with real integers. And then when they die, they even most of the time forget before they die, John. If you notice that people start going into amnesia before they leave here. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. And this is synonymous with notice how, and we'll sw switch this a little bit here, when taking certain substances, all of a sudden the reality starts to disappear. And it's because generally where you're at when going through that experience is so illusionary to the truth of what it brings that it no longer resides there. Wow, if you go to one of these ancient places that have been there for aeons and you go out of, you go out of the body and you have the third eye experience, you'll notice it's still there. It will just look like it's still functioning. And that's again another secret. The pyramids and all that stuff on a certain part of the timeline are still functioning. What has to happen is a time lord has to go back in and stop it from functioning if we are to ever see a, a, a reality with no civilization going on in it. You see what I mean? So this kind of stuff, is, you can't just go and move a lever and then expect to come back to this reality and it's going to be the same way that it is now and that it's even going to be better. So what has been learned, especially in projects like Looking Glass, et cetera, is to work on, from both sides or all sides is just to work on it from here. Yeah. And so this is uh, this is the case, man. And I think it's again, I call it the quest because it's not something it's not a doomsday conversation. The glass is now half full. Now it doesn't seem so boring. Now you can look and see the words are backwards. B-A-C-K-W-A-R-D-S. Back words, words, words. And that basically most languages that were invented in the world in the beginning were written from le uh, right to left. Our language went from left to right. Yeah. This changes the direction of our brain. And just a simple change in the direction of the brain is enough to get a person to start using primarily more, more of one side of their sphere versus the other. And if you want to understand the ancient knowledge, John, the ancient knowledge and the ancient languages are fire languages. This is a fire God that we deal with it's in this world, a consuming fire, as I keep bringing up to individuals. And they often talk about this in the cult initiations, etc. But the fire is fi. It's five. It's combustion. It's the ang or the anger from the angels. <laughs> you see what I mean? So all of this, this, this uh, stagnancy, because remember, just, if you're just an angle, you're not the complete thing. And then there becomes a hatred, a jealousy. This is why the, the God of the Bible, I'm the only God. Come on. Everyone, <laughs> you're not the only father. You see what I mean? Because if one person, and I want to tell you this, if one person then what you feel in the performance, if the individuals are pulling from your energy because they, they look up to you, yeah. right? Then when the person feels drained, this is basically suffering from God's drawback, mm -hmm. okay? See, God's drawback, because God is a specific entity, was it didn't understand that if you make everything subservient on you, then they're going to drain you. Yeah. And then when you become drained because of a God being you are, you're immortal, so you don't really die. You go into this place that we call the netherworld. Notice how you have seven chakras in the body, right? There's seven more chakras in your legs and then seven more chakras above your head. That seven more chakras above the head is referred to as the higher planes. The ones below the sole of the foot is known as the lower world or nether world. So this king who ain't here anymore, as Creed used to talk about, is in the nether world. That's why it doesn't, the king doesn't maintain his status like the queen does in this dimension. Everyone knows more about the queen than the king. And it's because when you have people or that you have to take care of and the head becomes heavy because of the crown, it's because you're carrying it yourself. And that's why the king always became synonymous with the fool card. 
So this is the whole thing that we're doing. We're actually watching Tarot, ro ro Rotus, Sator, or Rotus meaning to rotate the wheel. We're watching modern Tarot 52 cards coming out all the time with the 52 weeks of the year, but nobody's realizing edgewise. Meanwhile, last time I saw the diagram of man and woman, they were strapped on the wheel. Yeah. It yeah. didn't look so fun. And that's the difference. If you can't get out of this, then you don't get a chance to, to, uh, to depressurize. Like you notice how if you go from show to show to show to show to show, it just becomes like <laughs> you, you can't even get a chance to get a clear thought. It's like it fills your entire conscious. Well, that's yeah. kind of what it's like being in a world that you are here to service and intend to, but never getting that break of coming out of your envelope and into the astral limitlessness. You yeah. see what I mean? It wouldn't be so bad being here if you could control your dreams at night. And I'm here to tell people that you can. It's called lucid dreaming, but it goes a lot more deeper. You can dream about tomorrow. Earth's scope, we call this the dream scope. Earth's scope is very slow. This is why you can say things that don't happen right away. Yeah. The way the language is constructed, like I said, it's like a slow moving block wheel. So you can actually say, I want to die. And then it doesn't even really happen to you. You see what I mean? You have to keep saying it over and over again for days, maybe even months on end, because the energy that you have is basically the enemy, excuse me, the energy that's determined to how fast that's going to happen. Understand what I'm saying? If a person is low energy and they feel like they want to die, dinner, generally they, you, they, they live longer because they are such a slow, dense energy to manifest anything that they really want takes yeah. a long time. And just like a person that's running a great deal of energy, a high vibratory field can say, man, I'm ready to emancipate not only me, but also my family. And that'd be going on in about a week. <laughs> you yeah. see, so it's based on your energy is based on how fast it moves. So this also governs the spheres that you can actually get to. Now, if all these are still protections from one source, as the light or clear light, which is not black or white, is shined through a prism, then becomes seven colors. If you make it back up to the prism, then you're actually seeing things before it shines through the light. So thus you're seeing what everyone calls here the future. Now, because there's different envelopes that the light must pierce through, if you make it to one of the higher envelopes before it gets here with your ran, which is your spiritual body, and you go and see what's there and then you wake up here, in dream time, or excuse me, through dream time, you wake up here before that happens, then you know the future. So you see, it's not so um, magical and mystical and intense where it's based on real principles that are involved with the energy center, center or what we just call realm dynamics. So realm dynamics leads us to why also that they, quote unquote, cannot ascend beyond the third sphere, meaning that they don't have the energy to see beyond a certain part of this reality. So how they really work it is, is that they debase. People need to realize that they are not higher than you until they make you lower than them. Yeah, yeah. And so if they can get you to like what they like, or they don't even like, excuse me, they don't even fill their mind. They don't eat Cheetos. They don't do all that kind of stuff. You <laughs> yeah. see what I mean? So if they can get you to do it, then you become the foundation or base black Saturnalian pillar that they stand on. You see what I mean? Like, and that, that's what the Arcanum also reveals is that it's, there's universal principles to this. So they're working in loopholes. They like, okay, if we can get people to be really stupid and dense, but not as, 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 as dark as us, then we can stand on top of them. <laughs> and this, you know, this is madness, man. But in every sense of it, the lesson. It reminds the, me of, uh, it reminds me of that old, I, I think it was um, Mark Twain or somebody said, uh, never argue with a fool. They'll drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. And it's almost like that <laughs> same thing, you know. <laughs> They'll drag you down to their level and then you haven't a hope. <laughs> I like that to beat you with the experience, right? Because now they're on their territory. And that's what I also want to encourage people about uh, not going downtown and marching and all this kind of stuff. You're now on their level. You're going to go to war with a Martian. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they, they are masters of that that whole conflictive five base nature. I'm here to tell people there is beyond this geometry. It's no geometry. And that's why they talk about Pythagoras, that old Python, coming in and giving these shaped up <laughs> spheres to other individuals such as Socrates and then teaching them how to mold a perfect pupil. How can you perfect perfection, sir? <laughs> how can, if something's already perfect, then what are you going to do after that when you mess with it? So who's the real instructor of the children then? Nature. 
But the parent has to be familiar with that too. So this is the whole thing that, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because as I get older, I think, what am I, 34 now? I'll be 35 in a couple months. As I get older, I start to see how we're more effective. Obviously, you know, I've gone now four or five years, but also in somewhat of a, the pinnacle of, uh, of me and my conflict with the gods, I'll say. Mm. Because one thing about my past experiences in life is that I realized that there were entities here. Uh, and I saw it just like I'm seeing the guy that's right next to me right now. And in that moment, it didn't scare me more so than it says, oh my goodness, we got to recheck everything. I've always been that kind of individual where if I find something not to be true that I really believe was true, almost like finding out Santa Claus doesn't exist, mm -hmm. you start to wonder, well, what else is not true? Because you just really like got me there. And then that's when I started working with all the underpinnings of the reality, which it, it eventually led me to the language. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a glorious state of mind that I, that I get a chance to inhabit these days with, with fully knowing the truth. Um, but there's also the mission itself, like I said, which is to get this to our fellow uh, brothers and sisters that are here on the uh, fellow, literally meaning they fell low, uh, brothers and sisters that are here on the dimension to actually emancipate them into a higher state of their consciousness. So that way they can correct their biorhythm. Because remember, another thing that you not, may not be aware of, John, is that what happens if a person actually dies, they can get stuck in the envelope in a tense, meaning that they're not actually ascended, but they're not descended. They're kind of in this gray area that the Catholics love to call purgatory. Yeah. And so this is why you get such a disconnection with people and their biorhythm, meaning their ancestral connection, right? And we really want to work more with the younger people who have these connections, which is everyone, to understanding exactly what that is. Also, there are habits of our ancestors. And that's where a lot of our habits that are basically hereditary lead to today. So also understanding how to control those habits or hobbits, as we call them, because they are more or less lower life forms that, to the size of an imp that causes a person to have certain inclinations that they can't seem to get rid of, like thousands of monkeys on the back mm. or chimps, C-H-I-M-P-S. So do you see that... The mystical side, and that's why they say when they, we separated church from state, <laughs> what they're saying is they separated the knowledge of, physic, uh, of the physical realm being connected to the spiritual realm. Yeah, sure. But that's not something that's really taking place. The spiritual realm is now so interwoven and our language is so interwoven to what is really taking place and going on. We have this a massive opportunity to, uh, to awaken ourselves and others around us with this kind of information. It becomes like a, a crisp breeze on an otherwise very hot and, and tumultuous day. And, uh, and by all means, I, I want to, to give people that kind of relief. I want to let people know, first of all, there's nothing to fear in the tense of that all of what you see going on in the reality and how things are taking place. Yes, it is our responsibility to relieve the reality of that situation. But overall, we've made great progress and because even having this experience, people need to understand that even having this experience, when making, making it through it, you get the medal. Okay? Mm. Notice how they put a medal on you when you, you, know, you accomplish something, right? So as you go throughout this process of incarnation on earth, when leaving here for the spirit, everything tends to be growth. It will take the medal of what is experienced here. We're just explaining to people now, you can get more than what they're telling you. And so out of your experience on earth, you see what I mean? So once you leave earth, then you got the t-shirt. I feel like I came here and I did it all. Yeah, yeah. I've seen certain things, talked to certain people, et cetera, where I, it's pretty much maxed out beside what I do here. You see what I mean? And so it's definitely been a great life, great experience. And we just, you know, we want to share that with other individuals and how they can do that now. And that's kind of why the, the message always re relates to relative things. So if you don't mind, I would just like to go over very, very briefly what individuals can do to, to assist their bodies in coming online. Well, that was my next question, because I think um, it, it's very important to have some kind of practical solutions that people can apply to their own lives. Because while people might sense their own um, disconnection or may, may sense that they should be able to remember something. That a lot of people need something to physically spur them on to do that so they can begin their own journey because so many of us haven't begun that journey yet. And I think the key for all of us is to begin it as soon as possible so that we can experience it to the full. 
For sure. And, and, you know, I guess the first thing that people need to know, this is a reward system. It's not a punishment system. There's not the stick behind everything. You do this or else. You can do what you want. Unlike I mean, religion. That's, that's already been kind of shown. <laughs> so the reality is, is that it's, it's a reward system. That's what's going on with enlightenment. And so people should, should see first, I would say that um, you have to want it. Before any miracle was ever performed, if you notice the ancient scriptures very closely, whoever was about to perform it would ask the one that he was or she was going to perform it on, do you really want this? Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why is because you can do as much as you want for an individual, but if they really don't want it, it won't have really much effect on them. And the reason why is because generally if they found themselves into a situation in order to get out, they're going to have to change some things. And if they really don't see beyond what they, uh, what they are into what they're going to change into, and that becomes rewarding, then they can't seem to muster the energy that is necessary to overcome certain things. And so I'm going to talk very briefly about just the mind in itself, or actually I would have wanted to start with the body because we did talk a lot about the body in this conversation. So I wanted to to give the conclusion of it. Mm. What I discovered is, is that what's going on with the body and meat is that human beings are being, remember I talked about earlier that there are certain things that we're doing that's putting us in allegiance yeah. with this force that keeps doing wrong things to us. And somehow we're agreeing for that to be done and we're engaging in something that, that, uh, that actually allows it to be done. That is actually eating meat. And the reason is, is because that, culture was introduced at the same time that the culture of the beginning of the Bible was introduced. And it has a lot to do with the etymology behind the word carnivore. It also has to do with the etymology behind why uh, God backwards is dog and why there was the land of Canaan and Canaan is still the canine. And then why the canine is a flesh eater. So what happens is that the canine, by all means, is an evolutionary process, that, a bridge that we have to walk over to become apex humans. But at this point, to engage in the same rights and actions as the canine, Anu or Anubis, is getting us into a lot of problems with combustion. Because this is what happens, just like you were talking about earlier about nature. When we eat nature, in the act of all this self, if we eat plasma, then we've eaten ourselves. Yeah. The rule was is that if it runs from us, then it wants to live. So if you want to live, don't eat it. Now, let's talk about the deeper levels of this is that don't have anything to do with moralistic bearing. If you put decayed flesh into your body, it putrefies more and it gets clogged in your organs, mainly your large intestine. The large intestine then develops a worm, multiple worms that become the actual lure to all the serpent worship and mythology that we are dealing with now. Because worms control consciousness, as you'll see in Stargate and also in uh, Star, Star Trek, uh, uh, the, the animated series. And it's because when you can get each, as a rife proved, each biological organism carries a certain frequency. So if that frequency overruns your system, then your system becomes primarily that frequency. So let's take the candida worm, who loves candy and sweets and frictus corn syrup. And what happens is, is that it, it gets into the bloodstream, and then every time you eat candy, it multiplies, more on a full moon, which brings us into some levels of lunacy and uh, disregard for, uh, for anything that we're supposed to be doing at times. And so what this is stem, stems into is, is that every single organism here has been hardwired with the thought to survive or the, the desire to survive. So you can't fault these worms for replicating in your system and then sending ideas to your brain saying, feed me, feed me, which is really killing you. Yeah. But that is the internal frequency that actually, when I say the baby has a language, this is the language that these entities speak. It's like a language of life. They send out a signal. It's more like an urge more so than anything. The urge that comes before you actually say anything. So what happens is when the system is ridden with these kind of organisms, the system actually ceases to become what we would call a human and becomes more like the worm. Now, an earthworm is an intense a snake, but it's a, an earthworm is a snake. Let's just put it like that. So what people have to do is they have to work on, well, actually, you don't have to do anything. What you get to do is you get to work on yourself step by step like a surgeon should. And start going through the body, and we have this on the site, and there's other things that we, we have. We have free, we have free posts 
and things that you can do that you can pay for. We always make sure it's like that. The platform, astroquest.com is completely free. You get all the information, et cetera. There are very inexpensive ways to clean your, uh, your filters. You never run your car f forever without cleaning the filters. So what makes you think you can run the body without cleaning the filters? Likewise, if the filters are dirty, then when you look through that filter, which is like an eye, your chakra is like an eye to see into that dimension. When you look through it, you'll see distorted things if, it's not, if that eye is not clear. So to clear them, you have to do something like whole body cleansing. And we have a whole body cleansing kit. And then also a person could just take the manual from the whole body cleansing kit and then go and get all the stuff on a cheaper level and then do the cleanse to themselves. So what I'm saying is there's no reason here why you can't do this cleanse. Mm. If I had to work at McDonald's, for a month just to do the cleanse, I would to get the money to do it because it's going to level me up. This is the real role playing game of life. So that's the first thing. Get rid of the worms. Give them an opportunity, which means you don't want to kill anything. You're doing what's called terrain modification. You're not going to dump something in your system that's going to eradicate them. So don't look for anything like that. They have things out there that kills all the worms right away to kill all of these organisms in your system right away would more than likely, in most cases, make you very ill. And this is why many people suffering from Ill illnesses are invaded by parasites or can sir. Can being the Aztec name for serpent, sir being the name for serpent. Good day, sir. Or uh, sir, sar, sore, and sir all mean snake. So when you're talking about cancer as a dead cell, what, is the, what does it represent? It represents basically a based state. So this is why you want to get rid of all these base states from the body of life. And so that's internal cleansing. That's what needs to be done with the body. The mind. Now, the mind is a lot more trickier because it has ingested much of all of our experiences. Actually, not much of all of them. And this is why when you go to sleep, little kids from elementary school, that if you accessed your local memory file, you would not be able to remember, you see them in your dream. And you go, oh man, that's Cindy from first grade. Yeah. But if I ask you in physical reality, hey, do you remember Cindy from first grade? Mm, no, nah, I don't know who you're talking about. So these, this is the gaps between the left and the right side of the brain. And of course, it's the corpus callosum in the center, which lights up because it's responsible for carrying the communication between the left side of the brain to the right side of the brain. The only problem is corpus callosum has burned out because of Cain and Abel going back and forth in decisions, meaning that when you keep having to not, you keep trying to make decisions and you're going back and forth, back and forth, it burns out your system. Notice how when you have to do this in the physical world, when you have to make a choice that's very hard, it makes you tired. You're like, man, why do I got to do this now? Then you go somewhere else and you're like, oh man, I got to make this decision. And then it starts to bother you and nag you. That's because it's pulling energy until it's actually you know, until it's closed there, the decision has been made of what you're going to do. Right. So what happens with the mind is, is that one has to first understand the language that they're speaking. And we've done a lot to highlight some things, but there's some, some simple principles of it. It's not a one day conversation. Just understand that there is a deeper meaning to the language. It is encoded. It is a cipher, but it actually controls what you think and how, what you believe to be true. When you unravel it, it will answer all of your questions to who's who, what's what, who's in league with each other, what cures, what kills, and all that. Because if you, if you notice, if you ever see a, a, a manual of the trees and nature and things, they, they're given these long names, right? Uh, Synthicosis, elithicocus, right? Yeah. <laughs> If you understood what you were looking at, if you knew the code to the language, you would know everything that that element actually does. Right. Okay, so that's how it's very easy for you then to isolate what elements do certain things. And so that's how you can begin to perform the alchemy on the mind to get it unraveled from the riddle. So that's as much as I can really lend on the mind thing right now. Obviously, it, it does good to, to just understand the etymology before you even read anything because then you can kind of know if someone else is caught on to it or not. Uh, and it tends to lead you to other things because once you know words, then you know that words are worlds. They're just missing the L or the God. So then when you have the keyword, you could type the keyword into Google and it will bring back to you a body of knowledge that pertains to that mo more than likely in sites that you would have never been able to fish out of the haystack of billions of websites on the internet. So keywords. Now, as far as spiritually, and remember, the spirit, some people think that the word spirit means good. And this is another misconception. So the moment we talk about spiritual, people start, oh, the good side. 
Unfortunately, humans have the ability to develop, to develop their spirits over time. And because many people have developed a very dark spirit, the work that tends to need to be done on spirits has to be done on an ethereal level. Right, yeah. Now, that's why we always encourage people to work on a physical level first, because if you can't clear your filters enough to even feel ethereal things, then it's, it's going to be like, you know, you won't be able to isolate the issue. And so things that are on an ethereal level, you can't really feel unless you've gone into a more subtle, subtle or uh, uh, what we would call conductive frequency. So mind, body first. So then... Once going into the spirit, now the individual has to understand that the spirit is the closest resonance to spirit is like light and crystals. So crystals can assist you in balancing out the magnetic buffer of your aura. That's why each chakra has a specific color. And that's why generally if you read about chakras, you'll find associated crystals because crystals carry their own energy field also. It's just an ethereal energy field. People that are very sensitive can even read information off of crystals. Computers are also crystals, so it shows you can read information off crystals. This is not something that's far-fetched. So an individual has the ability to put generally a charged or cleared crystal, which you want to read about that, onto their chakra center. And because the chakra center is spinning, it starts to wipe into this crystal. And this crystal basically starts to show the chakra its perfect shape. Because if you take crystals, they're based on certain uh, geometry. And when you crush them down into dust, if you look at them under uh, high power microscopes, they only get more closer to that geometry. So each crystal is containing a specific geometry and that geometry connects in with the chakra. And then so once the person has that crystal by that chakra and, start, and the magnetic fields start to rub together, it basically cleans the chakra. Mm-hmm. And so they're basically the subtle elements such as ethereum gold, not monatomic gold. That's really for the graduates. But the ethereum gold, which is basically iridium and rhodium. Iridium and rhodium is basically what gives the body the element that is necessary for it to tap into the stars because there is no star that doesn't contain, or at least, you know, from my understanding, but a large percent of the stars contain iridium. And iridium, when found on Earth, is always uh, indicated as it fell from the sky in a tense, that it coalesces in after, the ra- after it's rained down and it gathers into deposits. So what I'm saying is, is that overall, what you're looking for is you're looking to increase your conductivity. Because what happens with the body is when it gets filled with a lot of flesh and things like that is that it actually becomes non-conductive and it gets bogged down with other life forms and things. And so even if you start to activate, you start hearing something. Now, remember, the body is then like a radio. When you activate, you start hearing these voices from everywhere. If you saw the new Superman, the moment he gets to Earth, he first realizes his senses that are hyper are bombarded. Everything becomes louder, such as in DMT. Yeah. Everything you, st- you start to see and hear everyone all at the same time, and it becomes almost madness if you don't know how to filter properly. So that's the other pointer is, is that be sure to, to realize these different kind of dynamics when you're going into your activation. Also to take it serious. Don't be like the neophyte in there just trying anything, taking the whole bottle or, or, or trying all the cleanses at once or, mm. you know, overdosing yourself on something. You have to understand that you want to work gradually with your terrain modification so that way you don't damage your vehicle more than it already is. Yeah. But, um, but this, is a, this is something that gives us time to work on ourselves and then it also gives us the ability to see the results because obviously we will be inside the mind, uh, body, and soul for quite a bit of time as long as we can keep them uh, in great shape. And there are a lot of people I know in Ireland and beyond who are bogged down by the mundanity of daily life. Now, I use those terms reservedly. I've inverted uh, commas around them. But there are a lot of people who can't see beyond the next day or where the next paycheck is going to come from and who might feel a little bit intimidated by a three-step terrain change, if you like. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you think, Seven, that those people can do to to break free from that mundanity within themselves? I mean, is... It's not go out and buy a magic potion type thing, but is there, is, there any, is there any little spark that you might be able to give them or you think may have worked for you in the past or that you know would work for people that can just raise them that little bit slightly up in themselves from the, I suppose, the, the base level that they're at at the moment that's holding them back or disconnecting them? 
For sure. Well, the first thing is, is that, um, okay, it's the money. Okay, the money is, functions as God's energy. That's why they say it's God we trust. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that at the end of the day, this all boils down to, one, how much money or currency does the individual actually have? Two, then with that money, how much leisure or pleasure do they get versus how much work they have to do? And that's why I said superhuman or super slave, because you can t you're, you could talk about someone who's got a PhD, works in a laboratory or whatever, but then even more their time is devoted to their job, right? Because yeah. now even when they go home at night, even on the weekends, even when they're working in project, it consumes their life. And, but the overall research that they're doing is not for themselves. It's for the corp that they work for. Right. Yeah. So that's a super slave. So the reason why a person does that, though, is to take care of themselves and take care of their family and get a way of life, et cetera. So what is the cure here? The cure is, is that a person needs to understand that their currency is directly their currency in this world is directly connected to the physical current in their body. So in, in people can it's almost the obvious because the more energy you have, you become a go getter. You actually start thinking, of <laughs> you have more time to think. You don't feel like you should be here in this job anymore. You, you, you need to go re-educate yourself or that you need to go and first find out how to get rid of this stuff or liquidate this or get more intelligent about getting on the internet and figuring out jobs that, that don't waste all of your time, you see? But that's all based on energy because when you're low on energy, it's easy to remain complacent. You don't want to change anything because you don't want to throw things offline. And like, I don't even want, there's always a fear to have less than I have now and I don't want to become a bum. So I'm not just going to leave my job to pursue some high level of spirituality that I don't even know really exists. Okay, great rebuttal. But here's the thing. If a person is only living within their means, as they say, 80% of people are one check from being ruined most of the time. Yeah. So if you're only living in that kind of state, then if someone comes to you and says, hey, the reason why you're living in that state is because the currency in your body because what happens is, is that how much of this, like the Kundalini energy, when you're talking about Kundalini current, physical current is only a trickle down to that. It's, it's like they call it the sevenfold spirit. It's like what comes after you've achieved enlightenment per se. And so there's glory, power, honors, riches, this kind of thing. This is the trickle down of an activated human. They get that anyway. So if they focused on just that, then of course they can't reach the great point. But people need to see is that this whole financial currency thing is only one sliver of what you would receive empowerment in when activating the vehicle. Now, then we got these other people who don't have the money problem and they're wondering what's going on with them. It's because of what happened to me because I didn't have the money problem. I, at 16, I was already selling uh, uh, clones, uh, 386, 486 computers to a world that was just getting computers in their home. Yeah. So that, that's when they were like seven, eight hundred dollars at basically a, a forty, fifty dollar computer part from from uh, from Tijuana, which is where I was. I was right there on, in Baja, California, or actually in San Diego, which is Baja's California is right there. So what I'm saying is, is that then there's these people who are wondering, well, I'm financially straight, but what's happening to me because I'm still not happy. Well, what happened to we, me was is how I was told is that I had too much weight. So I was going to wait. They're the same words. I was trying to get light, but I needed to get light. So, and so I was shown yeah. around me that these cars, these condos, all these different engagements with businesses and things were actually holding me down. Mm. And that if I didn't like throw it overboard, then I will always remain on the same frequency that I was. So I said, wait a minute, this is a mathematic equation. Because <laughs> I always, to level out when you're getting these kind of, you, everyone has their own techniques, but I would always, in getting this knowledge, level myself out by, okay, well, you need to show me that in another area. And I, really who you're talking to is your oversoul, by the way. Don't get confused and think it's God. It's your oversoul who's coming back on biorhythmic time to tell you what you need to do to get to where it is. <laughs> so what happens is, is that I reverse the equation. I start realizing the reason why I was in this circle because I was repeating the same things. I get tons of money, then I would spend it all or go on merry vacations and then I would, something would occur, I'd lose all the money. And then I would get smart and, again and work really hard and then gain all the money to only lose it all again. And I said, man, this is the worst roller coaster because each time you get higher, it's like a giant, when, the giant falling when you fall. Yeah, sure. It's easier to fall from the first two steps of a ladder than the fifth or the sixth step, you know? So I actually started pushing. Well, I didn't start. I did it immediately. I'm a little, I, I would encourage people to do this gradually. I'm a kind of individual where I, I'm willing to stake my investments on my own intellect. 
<laughs> right? So I immediately basically gave everything away that I knew was holding me back. And if I knew it was going to hold someone else back, I just threw it away. And then what I discovered underneath all of that, even in my own possessions, were things that I needed on the journey. And so I put all of that stuff into a bag and I went on my quest. I started off, I think I had $800 after liquidating my companies and everything, $800 in my pocket when I landed in Costa Rica and I felt good. Yeah. I was like, I finally got away because it was almost like all of what I did have was because of where the state in, that I was in, not the state like S-T-A-T-E, well, that's the same word, excuse me, the state is in California or Atlanta or whatever, but the state of mine or position that I was in, I had that current because that was the current that was coming from that state. <laughs> but in my, in my mind, I wasn't fueling myself off of my own current. You see what I mean? And so that's what we have to ask ourselves. Are we, can our moods change when our, we get broke? Of course. <laughs> broke people are generally not happy. Yeah. Look at the term broke. It means that you're not fixed. <laughs> okay. So what happens is, is that the broke part of us truly is the chakra center. Once repairing that, you will see the physical correspondence to your work. And this is what will allow you not to play with yourself. Because they said there's nothing worse than the person who thinks that they're going to fool the supreme being. Mm. Because the supreme being is yourself. So don't go doing things that you know you don't really mean, but you think you've outsmarted this whole thing by listening to the conversation today. But your heart is not into it. So you go and give away these things because that's still for you. And that's the, the difference of giving things away to get yourself together versus giving your things away to free up humanity yeah because that that will be the last key to this and i'm glad we got to this point it's actually two hours in now but the key to this is i discovered this thing i call can you help my friend okay, okay. and i realized that this was the key to why i did not get jerusalem syndrome or babylonian syndrome in the awakening experience experience that i had because there was one moment for five seconds where my mind slipped. So I'm aware of what it's like to be crazy, but I came back. And it was because I didn't go for myself. I was more interested in obtaining something great to help everyone. Because that's how I've been since a child. It's something that's in my core. It's not something that I can really erase. So I ask people to question sometimes their motives behind gaining certain levels of power and energy. Because if you go in there for lack of better terms, without your friend or something that you're doing it for, the energies that exist there will blow you because your idea is too small. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like you came in there looking to only get a cup, yeah. not a well for everyone. You see? And so, and this seems to not be very shine. This does not shine upon very well with these higher states of our own consciousness. Almost like it has nothing to do with them, obviously. But if you induce some type of, uh, of state of awakening, but you go in completely self-centered, what generally how, I mean self-centered on yourself, what happens generally is some level of possession where the individual does not, they come out fractured because they've only amplified more of what they are. So remember, many of these forces are passive. Mm -hmm. It's just like metal. You can use it to make a plowshare and tend till the ground, or you can make a sword and run it through your brother. So the reality is, is most of these forces and elements are passive. It's the human that is guiding their actions. Yeah. So just make sure that the intent, and, and we have a show, it's called, Can You Help My Friend? It's a very moving show, but it's my uh, advent in one, one tense. This was after the initial awakening, actually further after where I was in a very, very massive state of consciousness and I started seeing these life forms that were, oh my goodness, it was just way beyond the scope of phi. <laughs> I could just say that. It was totally foreign to me. And I felt the fear creeping in. And then when the fear was creeping in, I started feeling the environment dissolve, meaning that I wasn't able to keep seeing. And then I was e immediately able to capture that, oh my goodness, my fear is closing this field that is allowing me to see so much. And I said, well, wait, 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 wait. Instead of closing it, can you help my friend? Because that's what I'm here for. So it's sometimes it's like you have to remember, well, why are you doing this anyway? Because when you get into these states, you can forget. <laughs> it's like you just forget even why you're even 
did took the substance or whatever. You're like, whoa, why did I do this to myself? You forgot because you didn't have a map. (laughs) It's like, who takes off without a map? (laughs) And so we have to, the map is our intention. So I noticed the greatest intention and what could protect you the most if you would need protection into fields that the unknown or limitless exists is that having a purpose because it tends to fill your vessel with the energy that's necessary to fulfill that purpose. And that's how you tap into superhuman energy because then you would need superhuman energy to actually uh, uh, accomplish that purpose. So if your purpose is to come into this dimension and to enliven and enlighten humanity and to get them in the know about what's going on around them, because that's a multi, uh, it's a multifaceted situation, you're going to need a lot of current and energy. You're going to need compassion or the compass to Zion. You're going to need all of these kind of things. You're going to need to be fully, um, <laughs> what is, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, not so much as an armament. But it's the term of when you notice how when you go into you see the movies and they're about to go in and do something, they start strapping on all these weapons and yeah, guns they, and they communication just equip devices. Themselves, yeah. you get, right. You need to get equipped for this actual mission if you're serious about it. So I think that there are some people on this line today or will be on this line that are serious about it. And then this message is for them and then they'll know what to do. And then they'll also recognize many things in this conversation, not as the first time they heard it, but finally the confirmation that yes. that's what exactly is going on. And that's all that, that I seek to do. And for those who are interested, tell us about your websites and the radio shows and how can people access more, Seven? Oh, sure. Um, they can actually reach us at astroquest.com. TV. If they want to see the entire archive of uh, the AstroQuest shows, we actually are on off season right now, but all of our archives are there. And if they want to get to the website, they can just go to AstroQuest.com. There's also many links on the site that'll link you to at least three to four hundred recordings of how this, it, all the way from the first day, <laughs> all the way up until now. So as I said before, the platform is just a really, uh, a really good tool for individuals to to mark their progress on the path based on someone else that is also on the path with our true intentions. So that's how they can reach, reach us. Fantastic. Well, I have the power. You have the power. We have the power. Seven sure. Bummer, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Alchemy Radio. Thank you for joining me this Likewise. week. Likewise. Thanks, John, so much. Alchemy Radio. Alchemy.